Hey guys, I'm Elliot. This is Everything Elliot, and this is my seven foot wide snowblower. This goes on the back of my Kubota L4701, and I've been able to use it once. Well, it wasn't fully functional when I could use it, but it is fully functional now. However, there's a little bit of a flaw in the design of this machine, and it's got nothing to do with the machine itself, but more to do with my driveway. You can see the skid shoes it's got on it. Well, they're about six inches wide and maybe eight inches deep, but I have a Millings driveway and those are no good on my driveway. They're tearing the heck out of them. So we need to solve that problem and we're gonna start to solve it today. This is a three inch wide implement wheel. Now this is made for, I think a finish mower. I, I think it's a finish mower. At least that's what the description said, but we're gonna mount this on the back side of the snowblower so it'll roll instead of just scrape. Now we're gonna have to do some fabricating and uh, figure out how we're gonna make this thing work, but I don't see why it won't. First thing we need to do is get this thing leveled off because we want it to, we wanna set the wheels up level because that's how it's gonna be on the machine. Actually, scratch that. First thing we wanna do is take these shoes down so it sits all the way on the ground. So I've loosened both of them and I'm honestly surprised the snowblower just hasn't fallen by itself. But I bet when it does, it's gonna be noisy. There's one side. There we go. So I'm actually gonna leave these skid shoes on. That way they can be used in the future if they need to be. So I'm just gonna tighten this bolt back up and they'll stay up and out of the way. All right, so what I've got here is some one inch ID tubing inner diameter, and this is one inch round bar. Hopefully, yeah, it fits in there perfect. There's a little bit of slop, but that's all right. That'll leave room for it to spin, and we're just gonna use it as a grease swivel. So the idea is to basically put this on here. Obviously, it's not gonna be as long. We're gonna cut it and use some of this square tubing to make the frame for it to sit on. So the idea I'm thinking about is mounting it somewhere right in here because then I've got full range. This thing can spin all the way around like so. We've just got to figure out where we're going to mount it to. I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to come off of here. If you can see that, come off this sidebar and then we'll go forward as well. So, yeah, then maybe I gust it up and I gust it up. Oh, we'll see where we get with it.
Is it perfect? No. Will it work? Absolutely. So here's the idea here. I wanted to do that so it'll uh, you know, mount up nice. All right, I'm gonna get the other ones done. So we're gonna fire up Old Faithful, the ESAB Big Master 250 hasn't let me down, and we're gonna start just, just tacking things together. So right before we get to welding, I, I just gotta say my last welding video, I was doing the fireplace gate, and a subscriber saw that I was using a carpenter square and said that is unacceptable and actually got me something. So I'm gonna show you that now, what he got me, and I'm pretty excited about it. Well, I chip my concrete, not the square, so we're doing all right. Yeah, that'll work. So here are the fireball tool squares, and we're going to use them for the first time today. It would probably be helpful if I had, like, better clamps, but I don't. So this is what we're using. There you go, the start of a spindle. So now that I've got this first one tacked in, we can kind of get an idea. All right, so we're gonna flip this upside down. So just on, right on top of it, 90 degrees to it. All right. All right, I'm getting real farmer-esque with this. Um, I need two 90s. I need a 90 off here and I need a 90 off the pipe. And I don't have A, a fixture table, or B, the right clamps to make this happen. So we're gonna do the old hold it in place method and hold that. hope that does the old trick. Okay, one little baby tack. Let's throw more, a couple more on there. Yeah, buddy. I mean, obviously I'll have to get squares on this to make sure it's square, but that's about what we're going for right there. That'll work. And then I, what I think I'm gonna do is, uh, is run a gusset from right here up. And then give me a third point of contact. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on these and making sure that uh, everything is hunky-dory with that. So let's go get this fully welded up. Make it nice and solid.
so that's how I'm going to grease the spindle. I wanted to get that on there before I welded it to the snow blower. So I'm at the point where uh, I can weld this spindle onto the machine there. I got it cleaned up. And I also wanted to point something out. Somebody left a comment that you can take these cylinders apart and rotate them. I didn't know that, but they left that comment and I tried it out. And now you can see the hoses are coming off the back, which works way better, or at least I think it's going to work better. I still did purchase some 45s to try the 45s on there, but I think I'm gonna run it like this first to see how that works. All right, so here's the plan. Um, I'm less concerned about this and this being level and, you know, square, I guess. I'm more concerned about this being level and square. So what we're gonna do is make sure the machine is level. So now we need to put this on here and check level here. Okay, that's good enough for the girls we date. Now we can, I'm gonna just tack it in place. So now with this tacked in place, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a runner from here up to here to give it some support. Um, well, that spins free, that's a good thing. My concern is it hitting right here. I guess I don't really have to go that high. I could go to about the midpoint and uh, not have any issues there. So we need to figure out a length from here to here and we're gonna have to cut some, uh, some holes some circles in there to wrap around this pipe and wrap around this pipe. All right, so this is what I came up with. I cut it halfway down and then left it up top. And uh, it fits in there. All right. I believe the rest, we can just fill the gap with uh, with weld and I believe that'll work So now all we have left to do on this side is just fully weld everything and uh, that's going to be super solid. I know it doesn't look the prettiest, but it's going to certainly work, that's for sure. All right, so this is uh, boogered up enough. Yeah, boogers. Look at that. Ugh. Ugly. Ugh. Ugly. But you know what? It'll hold. That's for sure. Um, that's boogered up enough that it'll stay in place. And what I want to do is tilt the entire machine and get the underside. But that's good. That's going to hold. I'm going to go over to the other side and get the other side going.
So now I'm at the point where I need to lift this thing up so I can weld the underside of it because I really don't feel like laying on the floor and doing it. So we'll lift it up and hopefully it'll tilt for us, but we'll find out. All right, it's up high enough now. I should be able to get underneath and we can weld the underside of this thing. All right, the welding's done. And before I show you these welds, I want, you know what? Let's wait for the air compressor. Like I was saying, before I show you these welds, I am not a professional welder. I'm dangerous enough to stick two pieces of metal together and I'm confident that they will stay together. They are not pretty, they are functional. What do they say? Function over fashion, that's my welding style. And I'm not even gonna grind them down because you know what, that's, that's just cheating. We're just gonna leave them ugly as can be and that's that. But the welding is done so I guess I'll show you and then we can throw a quick coat of paint on it. So some of them look decent. Some of them look like that and, you, and yeah, that's, that's not bad. And I mean, then you've got that and you're like, eh, it's all right. Some over here, you're like, eh, that's acceptable. That's kind of acceptable. Oh, did we miss one? We missed a whole, did we miss that? Yeah, it's like half welded. That's good enough. But then you get into things like, where did I really bug it up? Over here maybe? Oh yeah, that one right there, ugly. That right there, not pretty. Also that, not pretty. Will it stay together? Absolutely though. So I guess we'll just get some paint and throw some paint on this thing. Gonna hit it with a little brake clean first to get all this oil off of it. Ensure that it's nice and clean. That'll cool it down a little bit too. All right, so the idea here is I left this bushing on the bottom so that'll sit flat. That way when I take this bushing off, the wheel will actually sit up. Um, so we're gonna put this one inch bushing on here and then that'll get us one inch above the ground. So both wheels are on there. I don't know, let's set it back down and see what it does. All right, it's officially on the ground, on the wheels. So right now, even though we have the spacer and you can see that the cutting edge is tight to the ground, well, that's because it's not hooked up to the tractor. Once it's hooked up to the tractor, basically I'm going to make sure this is level. Once this is level on the tractor by setting a top link, then that cutting edge will be an inch up off the ground. Guess we should throw some grease to her, huh? All right, what kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't do a project like this and at least hook it to the tractor? Now, we don't have snow outside that I can snow blow, so unfortunately, I can't show you how it would work. I mean, I guess I can just like move back and forward in the shop, but um, I hooked it up, I leveled it, so the snow blower is level on those arms right there, what I've been leveling this whole project off of. That's gonna be important. 
So now that it's level, you can see the wheels are on the ground. So the wheels are on the ground and you can actually see the light underneath the cutting edge. So we're about, uh, I don't know, probably an inch up, which is perfect. It's exactly what I was looking for. So when I move the tractor forward, that wheel should just roll and then I shouldn't have to lift it. I should just be able to drive backwards and the wheels will spin and go backwards. Let's find out. Well, that's not helpful. Maybe if I turn a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so the wheels work which is fantastic. That's exactly what we were looking for. It's gonna keep it up off the ground and technically now I really don't have to lift the snowblower at all. I mean, I will, but I really don't have to. Like, I can make turns and it won't be an issue because the wheels will just spin and follow the turn. Well guys, that's gonna be it for the snowblower wheel build. Um, yeah, I, hopefully we get some snow soon and I can show you how it really works and. Maybe I can shove a GoPro down there or something to give you an idea, but I'm super happy with the way it came out. And I hope that, I hope that it actually works and doesn't dig up the driveway. I have faith that it won't. I guess only time will tell. If you guys are interested in more videos like this, it is winter time. We're gonna be fabricating more. So make sure you're subscribed down below. Hit the like button on this video. Just do it for Theodore, who's ruining the paint on my truck. Wow, what are we doing, buddy? This is a, Theodore, this is a family show. What do you have to say for yourself? He's got no shame. He's got no shame at all. Anywho, subscribe, like, thanks guys. Kubota L4701, seven foot snowblower. This thing's about ready. I ordered some new hoses for it. So I gotta button that up. And uh, like I told you earlier, I spun that cylinder. So it's pretty much ready to go. Until the next one, hope you guys have a great day. Again. Do me that favor, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you on the next one.